seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, engines full power, and lift off. Go Falcon, go Enroll 77. Vehicle is pitching downrange. And with each chamber pressure, nominal. At T plus 30 seconds and counting, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. And in just a few seconds, we'll throttle the engines down in preparation for max Q, which stands for maximum dynamic pressure. It's the moment in the Power launch nominal. when the vehicle experiences the greatest mechanical stress that it will see during its ascent. To help go from vertical to horizontal, the first stage also performed a gravity turn where the engines gimbal Falcon a small amount to turn the first stage from going straight up to horizontal with the help of gravity. Eventually, Falcon 9 will be roughly horizontal to Earth as we achieve orbit. Max Q. Falcon 9 has just passed through Max Q, and the rocket typically needs to go 17,500 miles per hour horizontally in order to avo avoid being pulled back down to Earth and get into orbit. You can track our progress to orbit you. by watching the left corner of your display, which is showing first stage velocity and altitude. We have several events coming up in quick succession, and we should hear them all called out by mission control. These include main engine cutoff, or MECO, stage separation, stage one flip, second engine start one, and boost back burn. Main engine cutoff is when we shut down all nine M1D engines on the first stage. Stage separation is when the first and second stages of Falcon separate from one another. Stage one flip is when the booster uses its nitrogen gas thrusters to flip the booster around. Next, second engine start one, we will light the MVAC engine on stage two for the first time, and after that is boost back burn, when the engines will light to place stage one on a trajectory towards the landing zone. So keep an eye out for these events happening back to back. And there we had conclusion of that quick series of events, which again were main engine cutoff, second, uh, stage separation, stage one flip, second engine start one, the MVAC engine, and the start of the boost back burn. Coming up next will be fairing separation in just a few seconds. The fairing will jettison away from the second stage as it is no longer required to protect the payload once we're in space. Fairing separation confirmed. And there's that confirmation of fairing separation. As we mentioned earlier, we will be attempting to retrieve these fairing halves once they fall back to Earth. Stage one boost back shut down. Stage one has concluded its first of three burns on its way back to Earth with the confirmation of boost back shutdown. This has properly oriented Falcon 9 for its return trajectory. And we're currently just past three minutes and 40 seconds into today's mission. The next major milestone is coming up at the T plus six minute and 44 second mark when you should see the first stage's entry burn on your screen. To start the entry burn, we will relight three of the nine M1D engines on the first stage, starting with the center engine, known as E9, followed by E1 and E5. During the entry burn, Falcon 9 is decelerating by firing its Merlin engines, but the vehicle is still moving really fast. This causes it to fly through Merlin's exhaust gases, also known as the rocket's plume, which deposits a layer of soot on the vehicle's surface. That soot comes from the carbon-based fuel, RP-1, that Falcon 9 uses. With each flight, that layer of soot builds up a little bit more on the surface of the vehicle, and that's why our flight-proven vehicles look the way they do. Falcon 9 is attempting a re-landing today back on land at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station's Landing Zone 2. As a reminder, at the request of our customer, we will not be displaying any views of Stage 2 for today. Falcon 9's reusability is key to lowering the cost of spaceflight, enabling more investments in critical space infrastructure. It allows SpaceX to refly the most expensive parts of the launch vehicle, which in turn drives down the cost of going to space, making missions like today's possible for more organizations and more often. The Falcon 9 first stage supporting today's mission will be performing this upcoming entry burn for its fourth time. Now we're about 10 seconds away from the beginning of entry burn. And again, we'll be relighting three of the nine M1D engines.
stage one entry burn shut down. The entry burn has shut down on the Falcon 9 first stage. Coming up next will be the first stage landing burn about one minute from now. The Merlins on Falcon's first stage are optimized for sea level, and these each achieve 190,000 pounds of thrust during ascent and descent. They provide the initial power to lift Falcon 9 out of the lower, thicker part of Earth's atmosphere. In comparison, the single MVAC engine on the second stage has a much wider nozzle, and it's optimized stage to two perform is in, terminal guidance. in space, producing about 220,500 pounds of thrust has saved. in a vacuum condition. Stage one transonic. In about 10 seconds, we'll have the start of the landing burn for the first stage. This is the final burn of the Falcon 9 booster, used to reduce the remaining speed of the vehicle for a gentle and precise landing. We should be hearing that call out shortly. Stage two stage FTS one. has saved. Stage one landing burn. The landing burn has started up on Falcon 9's first stage. This is the final burn the booster will see prior to landing. Stage one landing leg deploy. Nominal orbit insertion. Stage one landing confirmed. And there we have another successful landing of our Falcon 9 rocket. This was the fourth launch and landing for this first stage. As a reminder, we will not be showing any stage two or deployment views at the request of our customer. So with that landing of the Falcon 9 booster, we'll be bringing our webcast to a close. We'd like to thank the Space Systems Command and National Reconnaissance Office for entrusting us with today's mission. And we would also like to thank the Range and FAA for their support. If you're interested in more launch coverage, head over to spacex.com forward slash launches for the most up-to-date information. When you're there, check out our departure board with all the details of our upcoming missions. Remember to follow